Regressions are one of the most basic analyses that you can do in Stata, but also most fundamental. They allow you to basically observe the effect of one variable on another one very efficiently. And today I'll show you how to do this in Stata for normal regressions, fixed effects or random effects regressions, for regressions with interaction terms, and I'll also tell you how to input your standard errors. So let's move over to this data set that I've created for today. In today's data set, we have a balanced, unbalanced panel of firm stock level information returns, as well as the market returns and some other Fama French factors. So let's take a look what happens if you regress these things on each other. Again, this is not proper as surprising. It's just to illustrate that you can do this with financial data sets. So to perform a regression, you use the simple command reg space dependent variable space independence and you can use as many independent variables as you'd like but only the first one will be seen as a dependent variable so say we regress the excess stock return of a firm on the market access return we would get the following regression so for just typing in these three small parts we get a complete and fully specified regression output so we have a total of more than 300,000 observations, having an R squared of 0.23, a coefficient of the market to the TRI excess return of the firm of 0 0.97 with a T stat of 300, which is incredibly high. And this variable denotes the constant that we have in the, in the regression. Also the P stats, the confidence, confidence interval, F test and other information is given here. Now, if you want to add multiple things in your regression, you could simply click on that and add these to the equation. Here we have a multivariate regression with slightly lower t-stats because other parts are explained by the other variables. Here, therefore, you can see a clear overview of how a basic regression would work. Now, there are a couple of things that you're going to need if you want to make this a more complicated regression. You want to make it a fixed effects model, for instance. First of all, you need to set the dimensions of your data set. And you do this using the following commands. First, you sort your data set to just make sure that everything is ordered later on once you look at it. So I use my identifier and I use my time variable to do that. Now it goes through sorting and everything is ordered properly. And then I use xt set identifier time. By the way, if you tap and you, and you have a sufficiently recent version of Stata, the first couple of syllables of a variable and you press tab, it completes it if there's only one option. If there are multiple options like this, you can basically select with your keys which one you want, then press enter, then you get the variable. It's a bit quicker. And now it shows us that we have identifiers as an identifier. As the time variable, we have t, which starts at 13 and ends at 228, and there are gaps, so it's unbalanced. And the delta is one unit, so t only goes up by one step every time. After having set this xt set variable, we can start executing xt regressions, which would allow us to make multiple regression analyses. For instance, we again regress our excess return on the market. And this time, we make it a fixed effects model, comma, FE. It takes a little bit longer, but then you get a regression that looks somewhat similar to the previous one after introducing fixed effects. If you want to estimate a random effects model, simply change it to RE. You can also estimate a couple of different models here, but these are the most commonly used ones. Now, say for instance that you want to have a regression, a normal regression, that corrects for other aspects as well. Say you wanted to correct for the country of the firm. Now we just have a country variable, so we want to make that into something useful. So let's make egen a country dummy, which is the group of this country. Practically making a new variable using the egen command that gives us an identifier for each country. And there we have it. Now, if we want to introduce uh, one dummy for each of these countries, we would do i dot country 
dummy. And then we get a, a regression that includes all of these dummies individually. So using I dot, you can correct for this aspect. Now our t-stat is still very high. And you can also do this or other variables. For instance, you could introduce it as if it was a continuous variable using C dot or by simply removing this part. Then you would get a variable like this where it's just a continuous variable. It's not, it is not a skilled variable. It's, a, it's not an ordinal variable, it's a categorical variable. So we want to use the I dot. And you can also interact this with other variables using the hashtag commands. The hashtag commands ensures that only the interaction term of that thing with another thing is introduced, say like this. But these other things are not in there separately. So therefore we want to use two hashtags to both introduce country dummies and time dummies to the, to the regression. Now there are many different times and countries in here, so I'll just put in my year to slightly reduce the dimensionality of the data set regression. And then we should get a whole very big regression containing all of these interaction terms in this way. As you can see, it's taken quite a while to run because it's a large command. It takes some time to run. The larger the data set, the bigger the effect. And there are many types of collinearities which are then dropped by the data because there's either no observation in these two interaction terms or they are the same as another variable that's already in there. So Stata automatically corrects for collinearity to prevent that bias. And you get a very big regression table. With all of the information you probably are not really needing but at least you control for this effect. And then the t-step went down a little bit. But as you can see t-stats of 300 are in no way normal. So maybe there are some problems with the standard errors that we estimate. If you want to introduce robust standard errors, you can just do something like this, comma robust. This would introduce a thing with robust standard errors, already reducing the t-stat significantly. But maybe you wanna also use clustered standard errors. So you can use cluster in addition to this and then type the thing where you wanna cluster it at, say the country. Or we can also make it the country dummy. And now we re-estimate the model and we suddenly end up with a t-stat of 32. So there's a really big difference depending on the standard errors that you use in this regression. Coefficients are the same by default, but the t-stat is significantly lower. So introducing proper standard errors to a regression model is really fundamental and quite important. Thank you so much for listening and in the next tutorial I'll consider and tell you how to effectively use and export this information to Excel.